Where do you begin to tell the story of the Queen of the Blue Moon? Do we delve into Mary Claire King's DNA? For surely bound in that curious helix are the passion and curiosity that have fueled her magical career. Do we begin in her youth, a childhood bound in puzzles and mysteries, a flute as the background score? Do we start instead today with a woman draped in the kind of scientific celebrity reserved for the curies and the sulks of our history? No, the story of Dr. Mary Claire King is far more complex and yet more easily told than imaginable. She is a geneticist, a teacher, a mother, a human rights activist, a woman of many edges and corners. But in the beginning, she was a student arriving at Berkeley in the late 1960s. Went to Berkeley and I took a genetics course and I fell in love with genetics. I thought, how can people get paid to do this? This is so cool. It was Mary Claire King's PhD dissertation at Berkeley, identifying the genetic link between humans and chimpanzees that would lead to her first blue moon. This idea of once in a blue moon means a lot to me. We make mistakes every day, but every once in a while something works really well. If you ask a scientist, what are your once in a blue moon ideas, we can all tell you, and I've had four. It was this first blue moon that demonstrated through comparative protein analysis that chimps and humans are 99% identical in their genetic structure. Life at Berkeley was not limited to the laboratory, however. It was what was being stirred up out on the streets that fired the passion inside Mary Claire King. I became very active in the anti-war movement, um, active in the civil rights movement, because I realized how much it impacted all of us. As a scientist, one is a citizen of the world. And as a citizen of the world, you have certain responsibilities. That sense of responsibility would lead to her second blue moon, using mitochondrial DNA sequencing to prove the connection between grandmothers and their grandchildren who had been kidnapped during Argentina's so-called Dirty War of the late 1970s. It was deeply affecting, but as a scientist, you have to focus on the work. One has got to get the science right. Perhaps her most famous blue moon came in 1990, when she discovered the existence of a single gene, BRCA1, which would become known as the breast cancer gene. Her fourth blue moon happened when her research brought about a new understanding of the role genetic mutations play in the development of schizophrenia in otherwise healthy individuals. And so this, then, is Dr. Mary Claire King, tangled up in a lifetime of momentous achievements. Oh my, the questions she's answered and the lives she has saved, and the heart she has mended in such a relatively short period of years. And she's only just begun. Mary Claire King continues to move through the genetics landscape with a limitless passion and drive in search of that next blue moon idea. Perhaps in her case, they aren't so rare after all. I think of genetics as the stuff that dreams are made of. There's a whole new world of opportunities, of, of things to learn, things to do. Go for it. There's lots and lots of room in this profession. We're going to need a lot of good young scientists coming through. I can't imagine doing anything that's more fun.